Are you ready for career success? Your Career Podcast will help you to take control of your career. You can also find out your career success score by taking my two-minute career success quiz. You'll get your results, analysis, and recommendations immediately. Go to janejacksoncoach.com forward slash career success quiz. The link is in my show notes. Now on with the show. Welcome back to Your Career Podcast. I'm Jane Jackson, and this is episode 236. Now, today I have a very special guest, Anish Majumdar. Now, he is a career coach, an expert in the hidden job market. And don't we all want to tap into the hidden job market? He lives in Rochester, New York, and for the past 12 years, he has helped thousands of professionals around the world take the reins of their professional destiny and break free of the necessity of what we call job searching permanently. His webinars, videos, and articles have appeared in Fast Company, Business Insider, Glassdoor, and Ivy Exec. So without further ado, let's tap into the hidden job market with Anish. And let's welcome Anish to the show. Hello, and how are you? How are you, Jane? I, I hope you're doing well. And uh, hello to each and every one of your uh, listeners out there. Well, I'm so glad that you're here because as a career expert, and as you know, that's my my passion as well as helping people through career transitions. It's so good to have such a passionate and dedicated career coach to share ideas with today. And I think it's going to be a fantastic episode, but let's do this to kick it off. Can you share with us what your early aspirations were for your career when you were a little boy? I remember uh, going to, um, I, I, I was raised uh, Bengali uh, Indian, and so I, I used to go to Bengali f Sunday school. Um, and I remember um, going up on stage, I was around six, um, maybe having a borderline anxiety attack because I go up to this huge mic and that was too big for me. And apparently what I said in Bengali was, I'm not going to do this unless my mom is here. And so my mom had to come and I had to hold her hand and we got through this poem. And somehow uh, in the weird logic of, of children, uh, it, it fostered this strange interest in, in acting, in, in theater. And um, it, 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 you know, ultimately I was lucky enough, you know, by the time I, I was graduating high school, um, that strange kid had, you know, was doing Shakespeare in the park and, uh, touring around the US and Canada, um, learning alongside these actors. And so it, the, the first real aspiration, which was absolute insanity uh, for, a, for a child of two conservative uh, Indian parents was, hey, you know what? Um, maybe it's possible to like lose myself in these stories and that maybe all of this tumultuous stuff and i was you know i'm a shy introverted person uh hard as that may be to believe it was the first moment where i said i thought to myself well maybe there's a place that i can put this and there's a place that i can use this you know that might be beneficial so um anish the actor uh which was what i did through um most of my 20s uh um was the first kind of you know, little signal beacon, I, I, I like to think of, you know, from the universe that was like, all right, your journey is going to be a little strange here, you know, so, 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 so buckle up. That must have been so fascinating because everybody, you know, dreams about being a famous actor or actress and you actually got into acting and you did it. So you were touring across the States and Canada? Yep. And, uh, and, you know, I went to uh, theater school in uh, New York City, and then I worked in uh, Toronto for for several years. And, uh, you know, the 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 similarity we have as as coaches, I know you'll you'll appreciate this, the auditioning process, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the unglamorous side when you're not on a trailer is the rejection rate is devastating. Uh, you know, you're rejected for 95% plus of, uh, even if you're at the top of your game for, of what you're going out for. So finding ways to 
be opportunistic, to stay in a, in in a, in the right frame of mind was as important as as quote unquote doing well at your job or doing the artistic side, you know. And years later, you know, doing what I do now, um, it's something that I I keep finding myself you know returning to, which is that you know just because you're going through a period of time that is very, very stressful and all of that, don't let that overwhelm you. You know what I mean? Walk through this, you know, um, it's, uh, it was, it was, it was, it's been a journey, you know, to say the least. <laughs> yes. Because the resilience that you would develop, you know, going through all those auditions and, you know, there's the one part that so many are going for, of course, there's going to be a lot of rejection as well until yes. you hit the big time, which is really exciting, but being able to bounce back and think, okay, well, how can I reinvent or how can I do something differently Absolutely. and better next time? That's what really makes a difference. And so, Absolutely. Throughout your 20s, you know, in your acting career, and you, you will have really enjoyed, was this stage or movies or what yeah, it, was it that you it, enjoyed it, the it, most? It started out in stage uh, and, um, and, and going all through, you know, um, you know, the Canadian sort of, uh, you know, theater system. And then um, it was a lot of commercials for a while and a lot of, of um, making rent just by the skin of, you know, uh, you know, you know, of my teeth, but it was also exactly to your point. It was also a time where looking back, you have to love the process. I think you have to love the parts that are, that are not just the one payoff. And just like, you know, if you're trying to develop a career, there has to be something in you that has to want it more than just the easy payoff of the salary or the title or just the offer, because that's few and far between, you know? So when I look back on it, what, what was really powerful from a resiliency standpoint was realizing that, you know, I have to warts and all the, the mess of this, the, the building a relationship, the, the, the dance between people and, and finding that magic there, even if there's no outcome, I, I need to find a way to enjoy it now. I need to find a way for there to be value now. And truly talking about the weird journey in life, I would say if there's a secret to the work I do now, it's trying my best to show people that this thing does not have to be, you know, this business of getting a job or whatever, it does not have to be this terrifying thing that you can find a way to actually find the pleasure, to find the empowerment and do it in a way where you love the game. And guess what? The more you do that, the easier it is to actually generate these offers. You know, it's kind of like the, the a weird Zen thing, you know, it's like you can't get when you're playing basketball or something, you can't just be thinking about points, right? You have to play the game moment to moment, you know? And I think this is what we lose sometimes because there's naturally so much stress and stuff involved, you know, you know, in a moment like this. But as an actor, you know, the great thing about getting rejected 95% of the time is that you develop this sense of humor and you're like, okay, maybe I'm most probably not going to get this, but I have a chance to get to know you. I have a chance to work with you for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I love the energy that's here. I can learn something from you here. Oh, this is interesting. What, what what brought you here? And before you know it, right, the energy, this, the collaboration, you stop being just another actor who's vying for a role and you start actually being someone that they can instantly imagine. Bring this person on set. Let's get this energy going, you know? Mm -hmm. That's how I started gaining work is when I stopped worrying so much and, and, and getting a little bit out of my head. And I started saying, okay, maybe I'm not going to get this, but I can still, there's plenty of value around here that I can, that I can uh, utilize and sort of leverage. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because every meeting is a networking opportunity, isn't it? And of so course. if you think of going into an audition, say, as an actor, and you think the outcome is I want that part, and that part, the chances of getting it are so small, so small compared to the number of people who are also trying to go for it. If you think yes. that's the outcome that I want, it's quite likely that you may be disappointed. But if you think, this is an opportunity for people to get to know me and That's make true. myself memorable. Then you never know further down the track. It's a very sensible way to do it because you're laying the groundwork, expanding your network, and your network is how you're going to land that job as well. So with, with your acting career, what was the catalyst that made you decide to go into something else? Was there something in between the acting and the career coaching before you became a coach or did yes. you go from acting to coaching? Yes, it was, it's, it's again, this, this strange, you, you know, I, I will have this conversation with my clients uh, often, which is that ideally in your journey, you don't just want it to be 
really about you had a plan and then I got it, right? You want there to be kismet. You want there to be some destiny, you know, a little bit of, of that inspiration. And uh, definitely the, the one thing that was between that was um, uh, t starting from survival. Uh, I learned how to uh, freelance. I learned how to write for magazines. Um, I, I, I learned how to... Um, it sounds like strange to say it. I, I, I learned how to become an investigative journalist, among other things. Um, I found myself down in LSU investigating uh, murders at, uh, you know, uh, on behalf of a magazine at one point, and uh, and I was writing feature articles and 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 uh, about cigar magnates down in Florida, and all throughout this thing. Even, you know, again, the strange thing about this is that the skills I'd built as an actor helped me as a writer it helped me break uh down the the barriers between someone who for example might be very pr savvy i realized and and i and, and i realized this, this is true for by, by the way building relationships with the c-suite leader you know it you're avoid the urge to try to impress right if you feel like this person you feel intimidated be a fan you know what i mean be a fan be a fan of this person's life be a fan of how did you do this how is this possible you know and and so um, the journalism career, uh, ultimately, you know, um, it grew. Uh, I wrote a novel called The Isolation Door, which came out in, uh, in 2014. And that was, um, you know, a really, really meaningful moment because uh, it was a novel, but it was also the first time that, aside from my wife, um, you know, I started talking about, uh, you know, a history I have in my family. You know, my, my mom had has schizophrenia and uh it was you know you know acting again was something that it it felt like a release it felt mm -hmm. like you know a way to deal with the tumult you know and so uh this book which was about um you know a kid in his 20s navigating the the balance between responsibility for your family and creating your own life uh that was the first time where you know i was able to share that and it was magical to be able to um start getting you know, feedback from readers and stuff like that to say, hey, I just want you to know um, I've been dealing with this with my dad for the last 30 years. Um, I've been dealing with this with my brother, my sister. And uh, again, you know, just like me and you, we have this weird kinship because our journeys professionally are similar. You know, I had never up until that point because I never dared talk about it. You know, I'd never had any kind of kinship where I never would have thought that actually there are similarities and you could learn and lean from people who had actually been through that. But I, I learned it through, um, through that book coming out, you know? And so, um, it was the acting and then the writing and then all of this in some strange sense coalesced, uh, in this pathway, um, in the most surprising way, because I never thought that my life would consist heavily of helping people one-on-one. -on -one. I always thought, Hey, big, huge outcome, you know, and I think that's true for many of us, you know, we think ultimate job, we think ultimate, you know, job title or ultimate compensation. But how often do we think about like, what's Jane Jackson's magical process, right? How can we make sure that no matter where you go in life, that everyone understands and respects that, listen, there's a way that she looks at the world that is absolutely unique. So however you work with her, you don't or whatever, you've got to respect the fact that she has her own unique territory. That thinking like that will bring massive amounts of flow out there, you know? And again, I think that's where this mind sh shift happens, you know? It's like, can you fight the desire to try to pattern something else out there? Can you trust that you might already have more than enough there? And the answer might be running with your unique, crazy magic, you know, instead of constantly trying to echo and figure out, you know, what, what, what laneway should I sort of drift in? You know, um, that's been a little bit of the, the push and pull, at least in my life, you know, in terms of, in terms of balancing all of this. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's fascinating. So you've gone from actor to investigative journalist to author, and then being so raw and real to share um, your personal story as well. And I was reading a little bit before our, our interview about, you know, your background and and it sort of was triggered from your father passing away and then your mother going through those challenges. And my father yes. passed away when I was 11 years old as well, which was very, very early on. And that forms part of why I'm coaching now. So everything that happens in your life as well, Anish, it, it's made you who you are today so so was that when you decided you wanted to help people in their careers as well 
Well, you know, there was a there was a moment that I'll never, I'll, you know, I'll never forget. I was, um, you know, it was just another day, and 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 for you know, the truth was for many years what this business became, it was just a sideline. You know, I thought, listen, look, I'm just going to keep writing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do. You know, p- pursue my artistic goals and. As a sideline, look, you know, the word had started to spread that, look, start working with this guy because, you know, he has a way of kind of reframing your story. He has a way of kind of shaping what it is to, to get an outcome. So, but I was, I never, I didn't, I didn't take it seriously until uh, I, I was on the phone with this guy, Arthur, and I, I will remember this forever. This, this guy in his 50s, an architect, um, we're ostensibly talking about working together, uh, you know, building his resume and... Uh, he starts telling me his story about how he had spent like 20 plus years um, building a career in New York. He had been promised by this company, this architectural firm, look, we're going to take care of you, um, equity, all those things that you need. You focus on the creative. And you know, me being a creative person, that that Mm -hmm. resonated with me. I I got that. He's like, yep, Arthur, you focus on that. So that's what he did. He he jumped into the projects. He did amazing award-winning work for what he did. They reneged on basically everything that they had promised him. Now he's out there and he's like, look, I'm supposed to get this job search up and running. Okay. But the problem is, it's like every time I go back home, uh, I look at my wife and I feel like a failure, you know? Like I feel old and I feel uh, out of step. I feel stupid because I trusted the wrong people. And now uh, I have to somehow start over uh you know, i don't i don't i don't get it you know and at the time i didn't have an answer for him and that's the the weird thing is like yeah we worked together but but what what stayed in my mind was was this obsession with the idea that said look there's got to be something different than this because this is very common you know like i've seen now at this point you know having served 2000 other people clients like i've seen c suite leaders who who will tell me variations of that where they they're not free you know like if if i took away your job and it was impossible for you to easily generate as good or better on your terms then you're not free you're not free you cannot act freely and so uh, i made a promise to myself that look i don't know if there's an answer but i know that by that point you know, I'd lived in a pretty entrepreneurial capacity and I'd generated all sorts of weird opportunities in all sorts of weird ways. So my thought was, look, maybe, you know, we say we can network our way to a job. Okay, maybe there's a way to actually systematize that. Maybe I can, and which is what I did, learn alongside as many entrepreneurs, business development experts, sales experts, selling on the call um, experts to figure out Is there an end to end that we can put together here that means that someone like Arthur does not ever have to actually be cast aside that he can, while working his job, while doing what he's doing, keep leveraging it in real time, leveraging his his skills, his impact, his process so that his network is growing, his impact is growing and if 80 to 90 percent of those roles out there are never making it to a job posting they're going to come through the relationships so instead of chasing the postings chase the relationships in a right way build and scale the relationships in the right way identify pain in the right way and you're going to get the offers as well and you can do all of that stuff without having to make it your new job or and we've all had this i remember picking up the phone calling my wife honey great news i quit my job she's like what what the heck are you talking about i was like no no it's great it's great she's like what what do you have lined up nothing you know <laughs> it's like it's like you as long as I, I i i know what that feeling is like so so it it, it uh it, you know it, it fostered this um this obsession but it has been so um amazingly pleasurable because Every single, and I'm not going to say it has been easy by any stretch of the imagination, but every person that that I've had a chance to work with, you know, to see some of those lights come on and to see them fighting that good fight, you know, a, a fight as much, I think, about self-respect, you know, as it is about a 30, 20% pay raise or 30% pay raise, you know, really, those are just stand-ins for you feeling good, you feeling abundant, and you feeling like, man... Go go travel around the world. Go with your family wherever you want, and 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 I don't ever want to, you to worry that you're going to pay a price uh, professionally for 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 doing that, you know, because you've got leverage. It's just it hasn't been used yet, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's what we've been that's what we've been uh, we've been up to um, we've been you know over here, you know, uh, and that's kind of what sparked it.
Yeah. And and so true. Too many people feel that they're beholden to a job and then they feel so trapped because it's like, oh, I need to wait for someone to tap me on the shoulder for a pay rise or to someone to notice me so that I get a promotion. And and it's almost like I don't like to say a victim mentality, but it's a passive way of managing your career. It's like I've got a job now. They should be looking after me. But actually, you have to think like an entrepreneur. You've got to be innovative and creative. And if you can position yourself as the desirable person to have in your organization, the opportunities will come to you as well. And that's where you really need to build your own brand and be so 100% clear on the value proposition that you offer to the world and you're a solution to their problems. That's when that's when people will start knocking on your door. Yes. There was a, there was a a client we recently worked with named uh, Rob who had this similar thing. He was, uh, works in finance, which is notorious. It can be very, you know, hard in terms of getting unexpected internal promotions and stuff. And he was an outsider made good. He, he, at the time we worked with him, he's like, look, I work here, you know, people are, are, are what inspire me, you know, but, but I sort of feel like a jack of all, all trades because none of the skills I have really encapsulate what it's about, but exactly what you're talking about by working with him to figure out like, look, what, what do you stand for here? What's the, what, what, what's, what's your why? What's the process? He was able to, to basically get it clear enough in his own mind that instead of saying, okay, now let me ask for a promotion, he had the confidence to actually start building relationships throughout his company and to say, look, here's, here's what I've discovered. Here's the, the problem that I see that no one's talking about. Here's what I'm involved with me and my team. I want to see if there's a way that I can help you. I want to see if there's anything that I can do to support your objectives. Within six months, he had created a new role, you know, you know, for himself. But you're absolutely right that it's true that anyone could do that. But in order to feel comfortable doing something like that, it does mean starting by taking that mental step of a kind of ownership. You know what I mean? Like to say it like, hey, you know what? I am, my career is bigger than any one job. Like it's more, it's not this job is not the be beyond the end all. So the first thing I can do is, you know, re- before I, sh- I ask for a raise, let's start by recognizing properly what it is that I'm doing, right? So how about just every month, let's just sit down and let's just take a tally of what we've done, right? So instead of just relying on our memory, let's just actually systematize it so we can see this is what we focused on. This is what we accomplished, right? At least then six months from now, you'll have a little bit of a paper trail that you can use to say, hey, yeah, you know what? I, this is six months of ballast that I can, I, 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 can, I can bring in here. Yes, this is something that I can use. It's these, it's these, it's these mental changes, isn't it, that, that are so... Um, that are so important, I think, in terms of, of your ability to actually carry, carry it off, you know, and, and do it in a way that makes you feel um, not salesy or anything like that, but feels like, okay, it's all right, I can, I can stand with this, you know, I can, I can embody this. Yeah, it's too many people, they say, oh, I just did my job. But yes. I always say to them, nobody did your job the way that you did it. And mm. your way could have generated different or better results as well and so you're absolutely right when you need to keep a tally of the things that you've done i actually recommend my clients at the end of every week to look back on this week what did i do that i'm particularly proud of and it doesn't have to be huge and groundbreaking but it needs to be something positive that as a result of your own efforts that happened and if you hadn't done it it wouldn't have happened and that's yes. already a positive and sometimes it ends up being streamlining of processes or dollar savings or um improving profits or whatever it might be or even just improving the feeling within an organization or within your department or helping someone who was in trouble and that meant they were empowered themselves it could be little things or big things but if you document them as you as you're absolutely right every month and every every half year and every year you'll think wow i did a lot that was above and beyond what was in my job spec because too many people just write down their job description and they forget those tangible accomplishments as well and it's the accomplishments that's why people hire you that's why people would take on a consultant or a consulting yes. company because of the results that they get yeah and so it's There's- good for people to flip it on their head and i'm glad that that's what 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 you you help people to go through as well because it's isn't it rewarding when the light bulb switches on and your clients go 
ah, that's how I do it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, that, that the that moment uh, I was I was I was on the phone the other day where, you know, uh, with my, my client Tyler and he was like, Anish, you know, no matter what happens here and he hadn't he hadn't even signed on the dotted line on, on what he's going to say yes on. But he's like, no matter what happens, this has been a win because this is the first time that uh, I was presented with an offer that was at my dream insane number and and it was presented without me doing anything in terms of bending or twisting or anything like that. They truly looked at me and said, hey, you know what? This person is 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 worthy of that. And it's true that no matter whether he says yes to that or no, there's a permanent shift that happens, you know? It's like, it's like okay, the minute you know, okay, this company can see me at this level, everything changes. It's like, wait a minute, you know? Why have I been spending three years over here, you know, without without advocating for myself? Why isn't this happening, you know? And I, and I, I do think that, you know, to your point also of taking a little bit of an entrepreneur's um, kind of mentality, it's never been easier than it is now to make sure that no matter how deeply you are engaged in, in your work, that you have even five or 10% of your attention on building some relationships and doing things outside of just the bubble of your one company. Because I think if you lose that, if you lose touch with that, it becomes so much easier for one employer to sort of switch out the sort of oxygen in the room in some sense and say, look, this is the way it is in every industry. This is the way that it's always is. You know, it's important that no matter how deeply it get, you get, that you understand that from a wider perspective, you're always in demand. We always need you, Jane. So, so if you want to leave this job, like it's all good. You know, you've got options. And and I I think you know, just like with with taking a tally, um, finding ways to build relationships that have value, that 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 make you feel good and make you feel like you're learning about your industry and learning about what's going on there. That's a really really good thing to do for for this reason and a lot of others. You know, in terms of just making sure you're safe. You know, and you're never you're never too. You know, like my dad used to always say, is like you know all all eggs in one basket, right? Like have a little bit of that diversification, and I think that'll really help with your self confidence as well. You know, no matter where your where your career might go. Yeah, your clients must love working with you, Anish, because your energy is infectious. And tell me, in in your in your business now, I mean, obviously you're an author, you're, you're formerly a journalist and actor as well. In your business, how do you support your clients? What are what are your service offerings? So it has certainly evolved over the years. Uh, what it is now, and and what we call the Linked Hired program, uh, it is uh, it's an end to end system that. Um, what we want to do is we want to take your biggest career goals now. We want to we want to supercharge the attainment of that, but we want to do it in a way that we have found solves this problem forever. So the idea would be uh, we start taking a look at your brand. We start changing the way we look at this brand to align around a process. We start figuring out okay, uh, based around this and and what you're after here, who would be the 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 most ideal people that we can target here, the people who are most likely at the highest level to be feeling this pain. Then nowadays we use uh, LinkedIn automation. Uh, and, and, and so what we'll do for our clients is when we're at that stage, we'll figure out um, messaging campaigns. We'll figure out, okay, um, because many of our clients are very, very busy. They're all over the world. They, they, they want to they wanna focus on the human aspect. They want to focus on the relationship. They ne don't necessarily want to do what, what, what I did in the early days of, of LinkedIn, which was sitting at a computer hitting enter you know, 50 times or 100 times. So basically what we do is we handle all of that stuff so that they can efficiently scale up the high-level relationships. And at the same time, we're teaching them a way so that instead of interviewing, right, um, what I found a lot is that in hiring, there's a lot of things that seem like they're different, but if you really dig beneath the surface, it's the same underlying paradigm. So what I mean is interviewing, it doesn't matter whether you get the interview through a job posting, whether it's a high level meeting turned into, into something deeper, a panel interview, whatever. The, the goal is almost always the same, which is assume that nothing is relevant on that job posting if there is one. Your goal is to identify 
those two or three aspects of pain that are really driving this thing, right? The things that they're not going to put on Monster and Indeed, right? The really kind of unpleasant things, the real driving factors. So your whole goal is not to present or be the best candidate. You don't know what that is. You don't know what the real thing is yet. Your goal is to have the kind of exploratory dialogue there, right? That allows you to start revealing and build the trust, the rapport, to start having a conversation there about them, about what's happening there and make that interchange. And so bringing this kind of thing together and then so so you know having the branding the messaging and then the outreach automated along with this um negotiation factor what it, what it, what we're basically trying to do is we're trying to sort of have you put up more points across each of the major aspects of this game board that result in the outcome and so rather than saying oh man all of it is going to be on this one magic hack. What we just want to do is we want to make sure you're stronger across all of them. You know how to handle yourself. Uh, and we want to put you into what we call a golden loop, which means um, we have enough early, mid, and late stage opportunities for you that you have generated your, on your own with our, with our help, with our support, even when you're freaking out, which we all do. But you've gotten to a place where you're like, okay, this isn't a mystery. I can handle this any which way I want. The time frame is now back in my own hands, and this is something that I can repeat. This is something that I can restart. This is something that I can control. You know, um, and that 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 probably selfishly has been like the number one payoff for me has been because the the hardest times I ever had professionally was when everything seemed to be relying on one thing happening. You know, a yes or a no. And what I really want people to hear me on is that the happiness I think and the abundance comes when regardless of what your work situation is here, you always have a universe of stuff, no matter what. You always have people who are interested, people who want advisory help from you, people who are like, hey, come on, can I partner with you here? What's going on? You always have stuff, you know? So, you know, you're more of like a farmer tilling a very, very huge field as opposed to like one boat that's like, yo, get me, save me here, you know? Uh, um, yeah, that's been our, that's been our, that's been our, our, uh, our journey and it's been so fun to, you know, we call it sort of demystifying the hidden job market, you know, like taking this thing called networking your way to a job and making it something that you can track, so making it something that you can that you can work and, and implement. And I know you hear me on this because I know in so much of your work, um, I know you have taken things that uh, are deeply, deeply mystifying for for most people, and you bring it into something that is usable. You bring it into something that 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 can be leveraged. You know, that's the um, that's the magic of uh, of of what I like to say. You know, uh, you know, this work is. You know, and when our people are freaking out. That's what I hew to. It's like, remember the magic, you know, remember, you know, we've all had the freak out, but how sweet is it going to be to have that moment of recognition? Like, hey, they didn't beat you. The, the, like that was, that, that turbulence is nothing. That was, that was what you were meant to experience in order to finally not put up with those limitations anymore. And to say, you know what, that's it. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. What it is, is it's a huge shift in mindset as well. Yes. From Absolutely. being, you know, on the recipient end to becoming someone who is in charge of your career and really being in the driver's seat of your own yes. career as well. And too many people don't realize that they do have that power. They just haven't known how to tap into it because as job search is not rocket science. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a process. And yes. too many people don't follow the process. They just think, oh, if I just click apply, apply, apply online enough times, I'll get that job, which is the wrong way to do it, isn't it? So taking this entrepreneurial mindset to the job search makes a huge difference. Now, Anish, I want to tell our listeners where they can find you because I'm sure they'd like to know more about um, your work as well. And so I will put this in my show notes on um, janejacksoncoach.com. And if you go to helloanish.com, you will find everything about Anish. I highly recommend that you follow Anish or connect with him on LinkedIn as well. I'll have that in the show notes. And you've got this really, really special um, training called tap into, hang on, let me get my glasses. I need to put my glasses on. So I, I, I so appreciate it, Jane. Oh. <laughs> 
quiz I, I'm saying, I, trust me if you could see the the power of the contact lenses that i have i mean i mean it's it's devastating okay yeah, so well, yeah well let me tell you i had lasik surgery so i have 2020 laser vision but when it comes to reading i need to read and i, I, want, see, to get, I, I want to get this url right so it's, <laughs> now listen listen it's tap the hidden job dot market forward slash ASAP. And I'll have that in the show notes as well. The glasses are now coming off. <laughs> vanity, <laughs> vanity, there you go. But um but so if you want to find a niche and to you know get a little bit more of this infectious energy, then that's where you can find him. And I think that Anish and I are going to do a few more collaborations over time. I hope so. I, I, because I hope so. you are a lot of fun to work with, a lot of fun to interview. And um, you over in Rochester, New York, me here in Sydney, Australia, you've just started winter. Today is the first day of summer in Australia. So look at this. Look at this, this is this is this is this is aspirational for me just to be able to uh, to be able to chat with you and uh, and you know and uh, see and and get the benefit of your light and your energy as well, Jane. So so thank you so much for what you do. As yeah, well. Thank you. And I think this really highlights the power of LinkedIn and professional networking as well, because I find LinkedIn is the perfect place to build authentic relationships, to get to yes. know people, and then don't be afraid to reach out. Now, before we go, can you leave us with your one biggest top tip that will give people another boost of inspiration? There is one phrase I just want to just put in everyone's mind. And that is start helping people. Don't ask for permission. Um, if there is one thing that, that I could change, it is the idea that whether it's a gatekeeper or a job application, that you're not good enough to speak with anyone at any level. And if there's one thing that has changed, it is that. It is that the amount of pain that is out there, the amount of help that is needed it makes it more open and conducive than it has ever been, but it's waiting for you. And you will learn how to ask better, but start by asking and start definitely by, by helping no strings attached. And I give you my word, the other side of that, okay, is what my, my client Mike used to call the, the, the scary, you know, scarecrow. You get behind the scarecrow and you're like, what is this? This is nuts, the amount of opportunity that's there. Start helping, start helping. Less asking for permission, more helping, and it'll change everything. Yeah, and it's the power of abundance, isn't it? Which I think yes. is so beautiful, especially coming into towards the end of the year and uh, the holiday season when some people are feeling a little bit vulnerable, reach out and help. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much, Anish. It's been such a pleasure uh, to interview you on your career podcast today. And we will be speaking again very soon. For joining me today for affordable career help, please check out my career success program. I provide a unique blend of online and live career coaching to help you take control of every aspect of your career or career change. If you aren't aware where you want to be in your career, let's talk. Check it out at thecareersacademy.online. The links are in my show notes. 